Hello and welcome to The Point World Affairs, I'm Cha Sang-woo. Is it a breakthrough in science and technology to fundamentally change the way we live? Or could it have deadly consequences? Recently, there have been growing concerns on the application of cutting-edge robotics and AI technologies in the military sphere. As we mark the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I, we take a look at some recent advancements in the defense sector that have been enabled by these new technologies. For that, we have with us Professor Kim min Yun from Sogang University. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me here. Let's first take a look at this short clip. Back in August this year, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro was attacked with a drone while he was giving a speech in public, injuring seven bodyguards as a result. This is a case in point in how drones can be misused as weapons that can lead to mass destruction. Drone technology is rapidly evolving. The U.S. for one has incorporated the use of drones in all of its war zones. According to the U.S. Congressional Research Service, the U.S. currently has in stock 7 to 8,000 drones and invested roughly $22.8 billion in drone technology from 2013. What's more, China and Japan are also striving to apply AI technology to drones that have conventionally been controlled by humans. China says within five years, they'll be able to control their aircrafts remotely by satellite. These devices have many benefits that have the potential to save human lives if used for reconnaissance and intelligence gathering purposes. But on the other hand, there are growing concerns that it can be abused by terrorist organizations and lead to the birth of autonomous weapons or killer robots. In fact, 116 CEOs of the world's 26 biggest robotics companies have appealed to the UN last year, urging the ban of robotics weapons using AI. The weaponization of IT technology is at a crossroad between efficiency and ethical legitimacy. On this week's The Point World Affairs, we explore whether there's a safe way to take advantage of the technology without blocking the flow of evolution and ways to create international regulations. Professor Kim, drones and AI technologies has been growing really exponentially. And this uh, development, however, it has been raising concerns among a lot of people recently. So why is that? Because if you think about the uh, artificial intelligence technology, right, every industry that we're going to have, but in the particular sector that we're going to talk about today is the military sector, because AI make their own decisions. Of course, when you're in the military sectors, well, they're going to use the weapons. So without uh, decision making with human reactions or human decision makings, well, they don't have any ethical standard. So in the like a war situation, well, if you're going to use drones or AIs in the weapons as a critical killing weapons, well, if they're going to make a mistake, well, it's going to create a lot of damages to the, all the people or other nations that we are against. Right, so tell us a little bit more about mm -hmm. these AI technologies application in the military context. Mm -hmm. So we know that some of the drones are actually applied right now, but these AI technologies are also uh, being mobilized. So mm -hmm. tell us a little more about that. Well, one of the advantages that they're going to use is the military sector. You're going to damage your enemies without any damages for your side. If you think about the technology level for the artificial intelligence, well, we are, we are saying that it's not perfect. We're trying to AI in various industries, especially for, we also want to use the AIs in the like medical sectors, like healthcare. Well, the IBM is basically using the AI to detect the cancers for the human, I mean, human bodies. But basically, in, we are in the developed stage. But that means we are using the AI in very dangerous situation. One critical mistake can damage a lot of people. That's kind of a critical issue that we're going to use AI in this stage. So you're saying the artificial intelligence is extremely smart, can be used mm -hmm. in various ways, in a beneficial way, but for the military mm -hmm. purposes, because it's so smart, it can be yes. very dangerous. Yes. We'll connect to other experts to find sure. more about yeah. it. 
Beijing Institute of Technology, one of China's top research universities, has admitted a batch of students into their experimental program for an intelligent weapon system to foster the next leaders in China's development of AI weapons. This unprecedented effort is a good example that shows how much the Chinese government is devoted to developing AI technology that can be used in the military sector. From nuclear submarines that have self-learning capabilities like AlphaGo to microscopic robots that penetrate blood vessels and perform assassination missions, big military powers like the U.S., China, Russia and several European countries are butting heads to develop the next big AI weapon. China, in particular, has been investing roughly $5.5 billion every year on AI technology with the goal to build a strong, technologically savvy military. That is 4.6 times higher than the amount the U.S. is annually investing. What's more, they're accelerating the process by collaborating with top IT firms like Baidu, Alibaba and Tencent. The U.S. Department of Defense has also been seeking to collaborate with prominent IT firms in Silicon Valley only to be hit with obstacles in the process. Google, for one, has announced the suspension of Project Maven, a joint military AI development project with the Defense Department, as more than 3,000 people have protested against the use of AI in the military sector. However, the U.S. is not likely to give up its pursuit of developing advanced IT technologies as robotics and AI weapons are emerging as game changers for future wars. At a time when a power struggle between the U.S. and China is growing, we connect with AI experts to analyze how the development of cutting-edge technologies can add to a country's military might and the possible concerns over the weaponization of AI. Let's connect to Erwin King, a professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Good to see you, Erwin. Thank you for inviting me to come on the show. Recently, Beijing Institute of Technology, BIT, accepted a number of students into their new AI weapons development program. How do you explain this nationwide movement of AI military applications in China? I would say that uh, this is a a very uh, a, a typical move uh, by the Chinese government. Uh, if you've seen this uh, in uh, Qinghua, for example, there is a Yao class. So they will actually pull the best of the best, uh, you know, very talented uh, youth into the accelerator program. And it just so happened to be that AI is very popular and very hot right now. So I think that they, they would like to assemble uh, their top, top talent in this uh, very important and crucial field of AI uh, for, uh, for the nation, for, for the region, and for the world. You just mentioned it's very crucial for China, for the world. Why is that? And also, uh, the artificial intelligence development has been in its infancy just a few years ago. But it doesn't seem like it right now. Well, I think that, uh, let me first just say that, you know, AI actually has, has existed for a long, long time. Uh, it started in the, really in the very, very beginning, 1940s, 50s, and it really popular, uh, it was very popular in the 60s and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and um, uh, so it's, not, it's, it's nothing new. I think the reawakening in AI is really uh, that it found a lot of good applications, in everyday applications, and it has really accelerated the betterment of life and advancement of knowledge and so on and so forth. Uh, so why is it crucial? I think for not only for China per se, I think for every nation is to really continue to pursue this AI is that it really would benefit a society. And a lot of the, uh, the, the outcome and other uh, research result coming from AI would uh, really benefit, uh, have large impact, societal impact. So this is the reason why I think that, it, you know, it's, it's, it will be good to continue to invest in our talented youth in the AI program, not only for China, but for every nation. Irvin, but there has been growing concerns on this very topic. A lot of experts have been worried about the birth of autonomous weapons system, which is also dubbed as killer bots or killer robots. So uh, Beijing is definitely um, discussed about on this front. So 
Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, I wouldn't say it's just this only pertain to uh, one particular government. In fact, uh, ethics in AI has been a very, very, um, uh, you know, hot topic of late. Because, uh, as you know, in, uh, innovation and in technology really moves about five to ten years ahead of, uh, you know, judiciary uh, system that governs the technology. So we're moving so rapidly ahead that there are a lot of unsettling issues. For example, when you create an algorithm to make decisions, you know, who is at fault? when the decision actually would hurt or even uh, fatally wound a person or group of people. So, so this is where I think uh, uh, ethics in AI will become more and more important. And I, I really think that this is not really only for the computer scientists to, to uh, really uh, develop more advanced algorithm, but it's also for the judiciary system, the executive branch, and the, you know, and, uh, and the lawyers and the ethicists to actually come together in, the, in a, you know, roundtable fashion to really uh, find out what is the best, where, is, where we should draw the line for the best benefit uh, for society and for the security and for the safety uh, for, uh, for mankind, if you want to say that. Thank you for your insights. That was Professor Erwin King from Chinese University of Hong Kong. We now go straight to Paul Shari, Director of the Technology and National Security Program at the Center for a New American Security, also the author of Army of None that talks about next generation weapons. Welcome, Paul. Thanks for having me. What is the significance of using advanced technologies like drones or the AI as weapons for military purposes? Well, we're already in a world today where we have seen over 90 countries around the globe using drones today, including many non-state groups like the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria using them for attacks, and many countries have already weaponized drones. And with each generation, these drones are becoming more advanced and more autonomous. So just like we're seeing in automobiles, more autonomous features with each generation, we see the same in military robotic systems. And that's lead many to question whether we're heading down the path towards eventually fully autonomous weapons that would be making their own decisions on the battlefield about who to kill. So is China's recent focus of developing AI uh, technologies into weapons, is this a reason why the U.S. has been integrating AI into its national security? Well, all of the countries we see around the globe um, that are that are high technology countries are investing heavily in finding ways to um, harness artificial intelligence just for general national advantage for improving their economies um, but also for their military purposes and we're seeing many countries around the globe try to find ways to integrate this into their military forces to gain an advantage on other countries uh, and other potential adversaries Many commentators say that this kind of advancement of technologies will actually create a new form of war. So you have also, also mentioned that in your book. Don't you think that if these kind of wars were to break out, wouldn't this be even more deadlier for the mankind? It very much could be. I mean, one of the, the concerns really is that um, robotic systems, because they enable greater scale of action, because one person could control not one robot, but with autonomy could control thousands of robots, that this could create a greater scale of destruction on the battlefield and more loss of human life. And in particular, because machines could operate faster than humans, that they may be able to operate at superhuman speeds, much like we see in stock trading, for example, where machines are making trades in milliseconds, that this could lead to a new form of warfare happening at machine speed that's no longer under human control and that the consequences could be potentially disastrous. Thank you. That was Paul Shari from the Center for a New American Security in Washington, D.C. Professor Kim, how do you read Mr. Shari's analysis on these developments of this military purpose um, AI technologies? And also, um, Professor King had said that these technologies are actually beneficial for every nation. Well, I have to mention about the effectiveness of AI. Basically, well, Without very uh, less human workers, basically we can control a lot of things. 
especially with fewer soldiers and more damaged weapons. AI can make it happen. So that's why that all this industry, as it is the military, of course, they're trying to go for the uh, developing AI technology so that they can enjoy those kind of effectiveness. If you can enjoy effectiveness, which means you can save money and you can make more investment on the weapons. So that means with less money and less people, you can make more damage to your enemies. That's kind of a basic theme that all these countries, where they're, going to, they're trying to develop the artificial intelligence technology. For the China's case, basically what they are challenging the U.S. in an economical way and the military way. If you think about the economic war between the China and U.S., uh, basically they're trying to have the, set the high tariff, but the behind of this economic war, where they are in the world of technology, China basically is trying to make a lot of investment in uh, artificial intelligence as well as other technology they can enjoy. But if they can achieve those kind of effectiveness, of course, well, I think they can uh, win over the U.S. economy. That's why they, they are so fall in love with those kind of technology that they can develop. Right, and it seems like these experts, they mention about the ethical issue of this problem. Yes. Right, it is actually in the core of this mm -hmm. advancement, uh, yeah. definitely. But I hear that some of the countries actually skip this lesson about yes. ethics, which is actually creating a lot of problems. So do you think there are some common ground that we can reach all the nations on this advancement? Basically, what they're trying to do for the international wise, right? we need to develop some international standards, for, especially for the ethical issues for the artificial intelligence. Well, as you know, for weapons and any other issues that they're going to apply this artificial intelligence technology into every industry level that we're going to have, well, of course, there's always trade-off between the cost and benefit. If we can say, okay, effectiveness or other issues, we can save money, we can take it as a benefit, but on the other side, like ethical issues, well, of course, we're going to have some costs that we uh, have to deal with. So that's why that we have to get around and make some internal standards, especially for the ethical issues. We can get that together so that we're not going to make a huge one mistake so that we can damage the human beings. Okay, let's find more concerns about this issue. Now we connect to Toby Walsh, a professor of artificial intelligence at the University of New South Wales, also the author of newly published 2062, The World That AI Made. Hello, Toby. Uh, thank you very much. What is your greatest concern when it comes to weaponization of AI technologies? I am very concerned, as are thousands of my colleagues, about the arms race that's happening to use AI to fight war and the fact that um, machines can't be morally held responsible, that, that um, it will be a step change, a, a revolution in the way that we fight war. Uh, the third revolution, the first revolution being the invention of gunpowder, the second revolution being the invention of nuclear bombs, and then this third revolution. Um, a, speed, a step change in the speed, the duration and accuracy with which we can fight war. This is a global trend across the world, this development of new technologies in the weapons, the military purposes. So is there a way to globally ban these kind of developments? Well, we have banned a number of technologies in the past. We've banned nuclear weapons now, biological weapons, chemical weapons, and a number of other technologies like blinding lasers and cluster munitions. Uh, so I'm very hopeful that we will ban them. In fact, I'm actually pretty confident eventually that we will because they are ultimately weapons of mass destruction. They let you scale, industrialize warfare. One programmer can do the, the actions that previously took a thousand soldiers. Um, and so these will, like all other weapons of mass destruction, have to be regulated. Um, and we have been successful at regulating chemical weapons, biological weapons, and even to, to a limited extent, um, nuclear weapons. And so I'm confident that we will eventually see these technologies regulated. And my greatest fear is that we'll actually have to witness the horror of them being used against uh, civilians and uh, unarmed combatants before we actually have the conviction to do that. Now, give us some ideas. As of the end of 2018, what kind of state-of-the-art technologies are we seeing? Uh, we're certainly seeing uh, an arms race to develop uh, prototypes of these weapons. Um, it, it's wrong when people think of killer robots to think of uh, Terminators. They're actually much more, uh, less sophisticated weapons that are at best a few years away. And we certainly see prototypes 
Uh, in most spheres of war, in, in the air, autonomous drones that are being developed uh, on the sea, the U.S. Navy has launched its first fully autonomous ship. Under the sea, we see autonomous submarines that can cross the Pacific uh, completely uh, unaided. And land, we see things like autonomous tanks, um, autonomous sentry robots. So there are the rudimentaries of these weapons now available. Um, and it's only a matter of a couple of years before we would see them operational in, in a number of armies around the world. And US, uh, Russia and people have made it very clear that they uh, will be using these technologies. Thank you. That was Toby Walsh, a professor from the University of New South Wales in Sydney. Professor Kim, so these guidelines, which we were talking about, the regulations, it's really worrisome that there isn't a standard right now, even though uh, these t technologies have advanced up to now. So what kind of policy changes or what kind of future do we see in terms of this? Well, in current stage, well, a lot of nations, as well as the companies, really trying to uh, make a lot of investment on those kind of technology. Well, if you think about the AI, as I mentioned before, well, they're going to apply in the military, in military, but AI is kind of very popular technology right now. Uh, all these nations, as well, com companies, where they're trying to make an investment. I don't think we are going to be able to ban those, I mean, AI technology. I think it's not possible for, in reality, because we are, right now we are using the AI technology in a lot of areas. But one of the uh, points that we are trying to mention, especially in the military, he uh, mentioned about the uh, like ban for chemical weapons and his kind of in, uh, issues for here, because the main issue that we are trying to protect civilians. So uh, when we are trying to use those artificial interest uh, um, technology, well, think about the accuracy. Well, those kind of accuracy issues always make trouble in the military. If we can improve those accuracy in certain level that guarantee the preventing from the civilians, well, I think we can proceed those kind of regulation as well as a guideline that we can uh, present in the uh, worldwide uh, guidelines. But I think was well, kind of well, we are in the competition level all over the world, especially for developing the technology. Where well, it's kind of relating to the economy level for the all the issues. So I don't think like, we're gonna have very well harmonies for especially for the establishing airline in very soon in uh, worldwide. So you're saying that yes. uh, we cannot ban the development of mm -hmm. these technologies, but we can uh, find ways to smartly use yes. these kind of mm -hmm. uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. So I think it will be also very important to uh, talk about the role of private sectors, yes. the tech giants mm -hmm. who are actually the yes. creators, the mm -hmm. manufacturers of these yes. uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. So what do you think they should think about? Well, basically, well, if you think about the tech industry, well, they trying to make money for that's that's the only is that they try to use the artificial intelligence. They want to become effective, where they trying to replace the human workers so that they can be more effective. Technology has always two sides. So when they trying to make an investment, well, remember there are always drawbacks for using the technology. Sometimes well, we can enjoy those technology, but sometimes well, we're gonna lose something for using those technology. But those kind of the drawbacks that we can set up especially for the artificial intelligence, where we can set up some ethical guidelines so that we can regulate those kind of technology as well as the usage of the uh, technology so that we can be uh, more effective way so, uh, and we can maximize the usage of the technology. Okay, thank you for your insights today. Thank you. Many critics had previously warned that the advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence could be detrimental to the survival of mankind. It is hoped that the international community recognizes the urgency of the situation and work towards prescribing a viable solution. That's all we have for this week's The Point World Affairs. Thank you for tuning in and see you again next week.